Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So, Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. Monsters are as old as humanity itself. Monsters embody our fears. Yet, they help us define the boundaries of what it means to be human. We know most monsters aren't real. Yet, we can use monsters to learn about reality. Psychology, biology, folklore, literature, critical thinking. We're on a journey to learn about the world through the lens of monsters. And we hope you'll come along with us. Subscribe at monstertalk.org. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to yet another wonderful semifinal matchup in Bloodsport Season 3. Uh, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm actually taking over hosting duties for Matt on this one. Um, you know, I don't know what happened to Matt. I think um, he got rhabdo. Does that sound about right? He was over exercising and now his muscles are just consuming themselves, um, which is a real thing. I didn't make that up. Um, I don't know why I referenced it, but um, <laughs> there we are. Uh, so as always, uh, lovely uh, co-host of mine, Ryan Myers, uh, back with us today. How are you doing today, Ryan? I am doing splendidly. Thank you. How are you, Jeff? I am great. Uh, I am. I am not going to say ill prepared uh, for my hosting duties today. Uh, fortunately, I have been uh, briefed nicely. Um, I uh, I'm going to be switching off. Matt's going to be covering for me uh, in a uh, previous episode. I think releases are weird that way, um, where he's going to be covering uh, the um, American Central Region, and I have the privilege of uh, having two guests on who I have not yet seen in this competition uh, from Canada. So uh, first I will introduce Stacy McPeak, coming to us from Edmonton. Uh, how are you doing today, Stacy? I cannot complain. I'm looking forward to, you know, throwing some punches and doing some split kicks. Is that a thing? That's a thing. I, I believe that's a thing. <laughs> I, I think that that kind of is uh, what uh, what JCVD does in that movie, although I can't confirm. Um, five years of Neil trying to get me to watch it hasn't worked. So, <laughs> well, welcome. Happy to have you again today. And uh, congratulations on your uh, first round win that got you here. Coming to us uh, from the other side of Canada, uh, the unpopular province, as I was told earlier today, of Ontario, Mike Sforza. How are you doing today, Mike? Doing well, doing well. Um, I'm going to try and pull off the Homer Simpson strategy of taking all the punches Stacey throws at me until she gets tired. Oh, that's a good strategy. I believe that was also the Mike Tyson strategy, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't know boxing either. So, um, <laughs> well, welcome to uh, welcome to the show. Uh, glad to have you both here. I'm not going to delay the inevitable. I think, Ryan, it's time to, to put these two in the ring and, and see what happens. All righty, folks. Well, just for trivia clarity, say Gropa Dope was Muhammad Ali. Uh, because uh, we have yes, to be yes, yes, on Muhammad a trivia Ali. podcast. Um, all right, folks. Um, let's answer some questions. Question number one. What last name is shared by one of the premier NHL goalies of the last decade plus? Current, de current defenseman for the Lightning and Kraken and the highest goal scorer all time for the Calgary Flames? After Jerome Ginla. I'm going to go with Fleury. And Stacy? I believe it's, you're referencing uh, Marc Andre Fleury, Theo Fleury. I don't know the defenseman though, so I also said Fleury. It is. It absolutely is Fleury. Yes. Uh, Marc Andre Fleury is the goalie. Theo Fleury is the Calgary goal scorer. The other two are Hayden Fleury and Kale Fleury. Wow, Theo Fury yeah. now notable anti-vaxxer and uh, COVID denier. <laughs> womp, womp. Womp, womp. Goodness, Alad, though. <laughs> All right, um, let's go to question number two. Which Garth Brooks song with some outstanding fiddle work is played by Louisiana State University when their baseball and football teams take the field? I'm locked in. Uh, I only know one Garth Brooks song. Uh, 
So I guess I'll say uh, friends in low places. And Stacy? I believe this is Colin Baton Rouge. They play their home games in Baton Rouge. It is Colin Baton Rouge. All right, Ryan, before we go any further, just want to uh, remind everyone that we're going to do this as the streaks format. So that'll be two points to Stacy uh, on that one. So uh, every single cumulative one you get will add uh, an additional one to your score. Uh, resets if you miss a question. Yeah. All right, um, let's go to question number three. In Greta Gerwig's 2023 masterpiece, Barbie, what word does Ken yell in excitement from around the corner when Barbie asks if they can be long-term, long-distance, low-commitment, casual partners? I'll lock in. <laughs> so I can talk. I've seen Barbie, but I just do not remember this scene very well. Um, dream house. I don't know. <laughs> All right. And Sforza? Uh, I that's just splendiferous. You got the right letter. It's sublime. Ah, there's a there's a scene of outtakes of him shouting different words, and it's uh, I think it's very humorous. Um, hey, let's go to question number four. Many of the rulings in the Nuremberg trials against Nazi war criminals were deemed guilty, but only because the actions for which they were tried were made illegal by laws established after those crimes were committed. What three-word Latin phrase is applied to this kind of law? I'll lock in with the wrong answer. Well, I'm probably going to do the same thing. and I'm a lawyer, so this is embarrassing. But um, <laughs> Although I, I didn't get a music question in my first round, and I have a music degree, so it's about That's right. fitting. Um, uh, I'll say ipso facto est. Ipso facto est and sports club? Uh, no convitus. Uh, the correct answer is ex post facto. Oh, of course. Of course, of course. It is unethical to be tried for things that weren't illegal when you did it. Um, and that plays into question number five. Robert A. Taft, a senator from Ohio, was very much against the ex post facto laws uh, in the last question. This essentially scuttled his surefire presidential nomination by saying these kind of laws were wrong. This was outlined in the 1956 book Profiles in Courage, a collection of stories about senators standing firm despite pressure from their own parties or constituents. Which then-senator wrote this book, which was really ghostwritten by Ted Sorensen? Frank, I'll lock in. I'll just throw out a Lucky Johnson. Johnson and Stacy. There was something about the title that made me believe that this is a president, and it was, and the one that jumped out for me was Bill Clinton, and so that's what I put because I thought he was a history dude. Was a senator then president? It was John F. Kennedy, oh, though. Damn it! The other womanizing. <laughs> You're on the right it. track. Um, hey Jeff, our scoremaster supreme, where are we standing? Uh, right now, uh, scores are uh, three for Stacy and one for Mike. So uh, still uh, anyone's match uh, going into the second half of this. Curio Raulianus is the scientific name of which houseplant named for its similar look to a kind of jewelry? I'll uh, lock in. Uh, yeah, I'm just... I'm just just trying to think of jewelry so it sounds like uh i'm really blank in here i can't jewelry would be earrings or house or a necklace or a watch uh bracelet uh i i can't even think of a house plant now <laughs> my mind's completely blank uh Let's go with a... Oh, it's probably like ring, if it's anything. But let's go with like a ring fern. I don't know. <laughs> All right, a ring fern. And Stacy. I'm hoping that this is not necessarily like type of jewelry, like what it's the shape, but what it might be made of. And I have a whack of these. I'm going to say, I said jade plant. Uh, the correct answer is a string of pearls. Oh. They're a succulent with shallow roots that are impossible to keep alive. I have one of those as well, but 
I thought of Jade. Dang it. <laughs> um, hey, number seven. Which native of the British Isles holds the record for being nominated in the most different categories at the Academy Awards? He has been nominated for producing, which is best picture, directing, lead acting, supporting acting, both original and adapted screenplays, and best live action short film between 1989 and 2021, winning just one time for original screenplay a few years ago. I'll lock in with an answer. <laughs> All right, Stacy, you're good to think aloud if you like. Boy. So I was like, I was writing down Ben Affleck, and then you reread the question, and you're like, British Isles. I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> Massachusetts uh, was once British, to be fair. <laughs> Uh, and then now I just, it's like, I can't think of a single person who might live in the UK. Um, um, I don't want to waste our time too much. So I'm going to say Guinness, which is a name. All right. Um, and Sforza. Uh, I just went with someone who I know primarily as an actor, but plays every kind of different role. So I figured why not behind the scenes, Gary Oldman. <laughs> Can I take a stab at uh, this one, Ryan? Yes, you can, Jeff. Is this is this Kenneth Branagh? It is Kenneth Branagh. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, wow. That's wow. I would have never. I was so that. excited. I I would have never known that before we started this show. But thanks to Neil and his uh, relentless love of film, I, uh, I yeah, sweet. Did he win for yeah, the adaptation a... of like Agatha Christie or like? Uh, go um, fast. Go fast. Right. None for those. Belfast was what he won for. Yes, Belfast. Yeah. He, got, he was nominated for picture directing and screenplay for that. Um, 1989 would have been uh, Henry V mm -hmm. uh, was what he got his first nomination for. Uh, supporting would have been My Week with Marilyn, where he played Laurence Olivier. Um, I don't recall the live action short off the top of my head, though. But yeah, hit seven different categories. He might be met soon by a couple other people, but not anytime too soon. Um, number eight, which city in Occitan, France is known for its walled hilltop center? It's probably best known around the world, though, for its connection with a popular board game. Is Versailles French? <laughs> uh, that's the first thing that came to mind. I'll go with it. Uh, Versailles. We oui, Versailles. And Stacy. So I was initially was like, oh, I think this is that like Saint Michel, Pont Saint Michel or something like that. And then I realized when you said the board game, I was like, I, I'm going to say Carcassonne. You make walled cities, and it Carcassonne is correct. It's a very good, very good pull. Um, question number nine: B plus, penis envy, Mazatepec, Amazonian, blue meanie. Liberty Cap, and perhaps most commonly, Golden Teacher, are all various varieties of what? I'll lock in <laughs> with an answer. All right, Stacey. Oh, God, I don't know. Especially the most commonly Golden Teacher, which, of course, my mind went right to the gutter. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now cannot think of anything else other than that. Um Although penis envy wasn't helping the gutter ring. But I guess. <laughs> um, I'll just say strains of marijuana. And Sforza? Uh, I also thought marijuana. Y'all, you were right there. It, it, these are various varieties of shrooms. Shrooms. Wow. Liberty cap, yeah, like the mushroom. Liberty cap mushroom. Oh, there we go. You were so on the right track, though. Um, and question 10. What is the surname of the main family at the center of Arthur Miller's quintessentially American play, Death of a Salesman? Well, I'll lock in. Uh, I can't win anyways at this point. So <laughs> I know I know this, but I'm, again, it's like my brain has left my body since we came <laughs> yesterday morning. Oh. Arthur Miller, oh, I know it'll annoy me when I hear it. I will say oh, it's like George or something. Whatever. I'll say Wilson just to get on with it. All right. And sports on. I went with the quintessentially American name of Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Statistically a great guess. Um, it's Loman. L-O-M-A-N. Loman. Willie Loman. 
Um, Jeff, Scoremaster Supreme, where does that take us? Yeah, as Mike alluded to just a moment ago, unfortunately, there wasn't any way for him to catch up in the end. Uh, he did uh, put up one point on the board, but on, uh, unfortunately for him, Stacy was able to string together one early and uh, cement her lead and uh, hold it out until the end with a score of four to one. Stacy is this week's semifinal competitor and will be moving on to the Bloodsport Finals. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately for you, Mike, um, just uh, wasn't your game today. Anything you want to say uh, before we let you go? I couldn't withstand the blows. Uh, <laughs> I got knocked out. Uh, you took him like a champ, though. Yeah, <laughs> I had fun. I didn't expect to get this far. I got the hockey question. That's what really matters. I, I'm still Canadian. I guarantee you no <laughs> other region that plays. You're allowed to still be Canadian. <laughs> Uh, well, well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, Stacy, congratulations. We'll be seeing you on into the uh, final round. Yeah, I think I, I we described this at the start when I would be he pushed, punching and tiring myself out. I think we just both like swung at each other missing and then fell over in exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes an effective strategy. Uh, so th- thank you so much uh, to you both. Uh, thank you, Ryan for uh, hosting this week and all of Bloodsport with us, writing uh, excellent questions as always. And uh, one last thank you uh, to our network, Airwave Media. Airwave Media can be found at airwavemedia.com, and they have such wonderful podcasts as All Creatures, Investing for Beginners, and What If World. So check those out, airwavemedia.com. And uh, again, thank you to my co-hosts, Neil, Matt, and Ken, uh, for their continued work on this uh, awesome Bloodsport series. And we will see you next week. Goodbye. love history but hate when it's stuffy and boring well look no further and join me katie charlwood your friend the neighborhood social scientist and reader of books as i delve into unsolved historical mysteries murders by gaslight and of course women who have been misrepresented through all time on who did what now the history podcast that's not your history class listen wherever you get your podcasts The Past and the Curious is perfect for families looking for a history-focused podcast everyone can enjoy together. I'm professional museum educator, author, and musician Mick Sullivan, and I have been creating The Past and the Curious for six years. There's humor, rich context, and surprises in every episode. There's dozens of stories about survivors and heroes and villains and a lot of underwear. Find us in all of the usual podcast places. The Past and the Curious with Mick Sullivan. 